Review copy provided by Monster Games. Thanks, Monster Games. Hey everybody, Degun24 here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to review SRX the game for the Xbox Series S and Xbox One, you know, whatever. <laughs> and my thoughts and things on it. Um, this is going to be like a podcast review. Not like, I don't have anything typed out. So, um... I'm just going to go by and give you my thoughts one by one and uh, just tell you what I think about the game and whether you should spend your money on it or not. So uh, the fact I received this game uh, free will not influence my decision. Um, I do have good thoughts about the game, but it's not without its faults. So anyway, let's get into it. And uh, Monster Games has had a lot of experience with uh, these games here lately as they made NASCAR Heat Evolution through NASCAR Heat, I guess, for... And then they made Tony Stewart's Sprint Car Racing, and then All-American Racing. Now you can tell the moment you get on the track that this is a Monster Games game. The physics and handling mimic uh, Tony Stewart's All-American Racing and Sprint Car Racing to a fault. Um, when you get out on the track, everything looks pretty good. You have the, the graphics are, are fine. There's, they're not really spectacular for like a small indie type company. They look fine. Um, the damage model that uh, has been in since NASCAR Heat Evolution is still there, and it's not really that good. Like, you can door people in the SRX car, and uh, you wouldn't even get donuts or anything. Even if you go backwards and into the field, uh, you're, you're going to be lucky to get damage. I mean, it does have a meter or, like, a little bar where if you do get damage, you'll hurt your arrow, and that'll happen after a few hard hits with the damage turned all the way up. And you can feel it affect your car, but it's, I mean, it's fine. It's just that the, the the damage, the way it looks, could use some work. But I could tell they focused their time on other areas, especially the last couple games. But anyway, let's get into the meat of it, and uh, we'll talk about gameplay. So, um, on NASCAR Heat 5, 4, 3, you know, ever since they added Dirt... Um, they've came a long way. Most of this game revolves around the Dirt series. Um, and that's from the Sprint Cars, the Super Trucks, and the Late Models. Um, and I noticed that every time they make a game, it gets a, just a little bit better and better on the Dirt side. And I'd say the Dirt part of this game is the strongest. It really does feel good to slide around and uh, drive with other cars. Um... In the last game, All-American Racing, I did not notice a cushion. I could have been ignorant, but I, I just never noticed a cushion. And in this game, on certain tracks, you can find the cushion and you can fly around it. Like, there's a couple tracks where I was starting in the back and I found the cushion mid-race and I just drove through the field. And it feels really, really good to hit that cushion just right. It's obviously very difficult to hit it just right. And some tracks, even if you do hit it just right, you're not going to go anywhere just because of the layout of the track. It'll just cost you too much time. I will say that the uh, the cushion is about the only high line that works. If you are even half a lane off the bottom, the AI cars are going to put their nose in and try to pass you. And that's frustrating, for sure. I wish they could find more of a dynamic track thing, but I understand that's very difficult. Um... On the asphalt side, it's definitely got a NASCAR heat feel to it, um, especially with a wheel. Uh, the game was definitely built for controller, but uh, there is fun to be had, uh, for me at least on the asphalt part with the wheel. I had a few really good races in the SRX cars with it. Um, I just feel like it's just built for a controller. Uh, whenever you are trying to save a loose car, when I'm wheeling it back and forth, it feels like I'm using a controller and I, I don't think that's good it feels a lot harder to save a car with the wheel than it does a controller but it does it feels good the AI is still very racy they are very difficult on the higher difficulties but if you get it just right and you get the right setup you could have some amazing races there's one race and it's on the channel where I drove from the back up to fourth and then the invert happened and I and I drove from uh, I don't remember what it was, <laughs> from 8th to 1st to win the heat. 
and then I ended up starting on the pole for the feature and ended up getting like third. So it's a lot of fun once you get the settings down correctly. Um, this game is just, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's a lot of fun, but I do feel like there are massive improvements that could be made. It kind of feels like they just took the All-American Racing Engine and made this game really quick. And that's okay, because I enjoyed All-American Racing. But um, it is what it is. Uh, a little bit more on the on-track stuff. The uh, We'll start with the sprint cars feel very good. Um, they feel about like they did in the previous games, but I'd say a little bit better. Like I said, they're really getting the dirt physics down. Um, there's no real damage to the wheels or anything. It's hard to even notice damage. Uh, I will say there are some... They've put tires around some of the tracks, and when you hit those, the, the physics really kind of die for a second. It doesn't really know what to do. And then you move on to Super Trucks, which is a brand new addition to the series. And I like them okay enough. Uh, I will say that they do feel a tad too touchy. Um, like I said, again, the damage doesn't really show that well on it. it just Things just kind of get bent. Um, they do look nice, and they drive okay. It just... I don't know. The physics on them seem to be the most wonky of all of them. The amount of times I've spun somebody out, and then our cars or trucks just get stuck in like a T-pose, where they're completely sideways and I am in their door and I cannot get off of them without like putting it in reverse and it's very it's just weird I, it, it has happened to me multiple multiple times it happens to me multiple times per race sometimes and that's probably my biggest gripe is <laughs> is the they're just so finicky a lot of times they can save it very easily and um, it's just it's just frustrating <laughs> But aside from that, the super trucks are fun. I really wouldn't want to do them for more than a season or two in the career mode. After that, we had the late models. The late models were a DLC addition to All American Racing, and they really don't feel that much different. My only real gripe with them is that uh, from All American Racing, they took out a lot of cars. There's just a lot of basic paint schemes now. I feel like they should have just brung over all of the paint schemes from the last game. And I think in, in all these series, you can only have like 25 to 50 cars. And I feel like there was more in All-American Racing. A lot of times, it's just 25. The showcase races are not as prevalent. But the late models are fine. Um, like I said, if you've played All-American Racing, you know what to expect. And then after that is the uh, SRX cars. And I will say that they are definitely super fun. On dirt, they... I just, my my only real complaint, though, is that they don't have the power I feel they need to, and that could be the fault of them themselves. At a lot of these tracks, you are barely having to lift, um, at least the bigger ones, uh, especially at like Eldora and the bigger asphalt tracks, you can just kind of barely have to lift if you have to lift at all. Like Lucas Oil, I think, is like that too. I feel like there needs to be more power put in them just to make it a little bit more difficult but really aside from that that's my only complaint I've had a lot of fun races with them and I enjoy racing with them um, but yeah <laughs> another I guess complaint is the uh, the AI themselves and especially in the career mode you're gonna have one to two cars that dominate every race it's very hard to win a championship especially if you start off the season kind of struggling, because there's going to be about two or three cars that just dominate the season. Every week, they're going to win. I've went through a season in career mode where two guys won 10 races combined, and then I won the other, like, four or five. It's it's just, there's not a lot of parity. It feels like even when they get spun, they can drive their way through the pack at any place. So, it is what it is on that. So, on that note, let's go ahead and jump over to the career mode, the biggest mode in the game. They've kind of changed it a little bit from All American Racing to move up through the series. You have to win championships, and that's kind of like All American Racing, and I don't really like that as much because to move on to the next season, you have to uh, win the championship to move on to the next series, I mean. And so, like, I got stuck on trucks for 
a second season because I missed the championship lead by six points. Now, they do give you a lot of options. You can choose from a very small season, like a third season, all the way up to a full season. And I enjoy that. <laughs> it, it's definitely nice to not have to run a complete 20, 25 race schedule. And if you just want to try to move up to the next series, you can do like a seven race schedule. So I enjoy that. There are a lot of options on the uh, owner part of it. I mean, that's, I guess that's the whole part of it. But there's facilities. And to move on to the next upgrade of engine, chassis, suspension, and tires, you have to purchase uh, a better facilities, which means you're going to have to spend more of your money. And I enjoy that. Um, it just There needs to be more ways to spend your money. And thankfully, like after each race, you have to repair your car if you destroy it. And that's nice. Um, also, you can hire people for your team, like uh, different managers and stuff. That was in the last game, but uh, it is a welcome addition to come back. I like the fact that you can get more money by getting better agents. Also, they've added the ability to hire drivers, and I think you could do that in the last one. But it's more in-depth because you can tell your driver to run very... Uh, aggressive or to be very easy with the car I haven't really found a good correlation to speed between the two of them but uh, it is very very nice to have that option and you can tell them like mid-race to drive through the pack or to back off um, aside from that I, the, the career mode though I just feel like there needs to be something else to do like you could be an owner and hire someone to drive in the series you're not racing in but I just feel like it needs one more thing, whether that be just a stupid autograph mini game or, or something. I just feel like there needs to be one more addition to really, really make it great. There's also online multiplayer. I haven't played it a whole lot because there really haven't been that many people online aside from the first day or two. But with that, you can expect about what you expected with All American Racing and NASCAR Heat. Uh, it is very finicky. You gotta hope the person has a good connection. Um, you need to have a good connection yourself. But you're going to have your glitches and your ghosting and all that. But it is fun if you get a good group of guys together. You have lots of different options. You can make it a custom setup, fixed setup, cautions, all the all that you could ever probably want. No, I don't think there's any championship seasons, but it is good fun. There's also some tournaments and stuff. But it's all going to come down to whether there's more people online or not. And like I said, the last I saw, there wasn't a whole lot. There's also a championship mode for any of the series and stuff. And that's fine. There's nothing really too special about that. But it's just there for your enjoyment if you choose to do that. Altogether, I would say this game is definitely good. I don't know if it's worth $50 or even $40. I would say $30 is about the perfect price point. I would say buy it for $30. Or less, obviously. I don't remember if it came out of $40 or $50 because I didn't buy it. Like I said, I got this game for free from Monster. Thank you so much for that. But I would definitely recommend getting this game at $3 or under. It just needs a little bit more to make it worth your dollar. Um, but there's definitely a lot of fun to be had. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this off-the-cuff review. I think I've rambled for like 10 minutes now. I'm sick, so I apologize for the stuff he knows. But I wanted to get this out to let you know how I feel. Like I said, I have this on Xbox Series X. It's also on PS4 and PC. And from what I can tell, the game runs just fine. I didn't. Oh, speaking of which, I didn't really have any issues with stuttering or frame rate. But like I said, I'm on a console that's more powerful than the base Xbox One. So uh, your mileage may vary with that. But anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys so much, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.